Hi, I'm Michael Palazzola with the LSU Ag Center, and today I want to visit with you about pecan signwood. So at this point, pecan signwood has already been selected, young juvenile growth, and we're going to go through the different steps in processing it. Now an important part of that is storage prior to. You'll see these are still long segments from when they were harvested in the field, and these have been kept wrapped in fabric, especially overnight, and drenched with moisture every afternoon to keep them fresh and ready prior to being harvested. Now we're going to go take a little bit more close-up look at some of the pieces themselves and talk about what we want to look at prior to cutting up the pieces. Another thing we want to look at prior to cutting is going through and sorting as we're going through. So what can happen is you get a lot of different so sizes of sign wood when you're out in the field. Based off of the type of grafting we're wanting to do, whip and tongue and four flap later in the year, smaller wood like like this is not going to be as effective. So really these three pieces here are, we're not going to get much out of. Really here, at, this is about three eighths. This is the smallest size we're going to be wanting to use and going up to this larger size up here for four flap. But this is about the size we're going to want to look at to, before we start cutting, go ahead and sort out and get rid of your two smaller pieces. Okay, and as far as going through and cutting them into individual pieces, there's various lengths you can look at, but I find somewhere between six and eight inches is about where you want to be. Any lower than that, you're going to reduce your carbohydrate reserves. Any larger than that, and you get into issues where it's bigger than what a new graft can support on the top because our initial vascular connection there is going to be weak to start with. So you don't want to have too many buds coming out in the top of your graft when you have a weak connection. So it's better to be in that six to eight inch range. Here we're focusing on doing about seven and a half and that gives you some freedom where you can cut some off when you're doing the graft to make it fit. Another thing to consider is if you've stored the wood for a while while, you may need to do a fresh cut on the bottom after it's been stored prior to cutting up. And you may cut this much off. And also consider where your buds are. You're going to want your buds on the upper end of your piece of sign wood as opposed to the lower end. So there may be occasional times where you're going to cut off more here to end up with more buds at the top. So make sure you're paying attention to where your buds are located when you're cutting them all in about uniform lengths to get ready for grafting. So another important thing to consider is the viability of your buds. When you look here, this actually has two viable buds, one kind of towards the center of the leaf scar, almost in the dip of the heart, and then one above that. And this piece of sign wood has several good viable pieces. So we're going to want to make certain we have that. Next, we're going to look at one that doesn't. So this is a piece of sign wood here that we would probably reject because when we look at this bud, even though I can see very small, minutely, what looks like a viable bud there, it's so close to being so minuscule that I would just call it non-viable, and we're just not going to use this piece of sign wood. We're going to throw it out and focus on our better quality buds. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about sealing sign wood. It's very important not to leave exposed cuts. If you do, your sign wood's going to dry out where those cuts are, and it's just going to leave a necrotic layer. And depending on how long you're holding the wood, it can go up to an inch, if not further, up in there. And then that just reduces the viability, one of the wood and the buds that would be in that area. And it's just unneeded stress that it's going to have to heal and recover from. From. And it's area you would need to cut off in your grafting process too. So there's several different techniques you can use to seal up. Right now what you've seen me doing is we're taking some shellac and we're kind of just painting it on the edges here. And the main thing we're working on sealing up is that circle around where the cambium layer is because that is the living part that we would want to line up later for grafting. Now still probably when we get close to grafting time wouldn't hurt to cut off where we're doing this. It depends on what the viability of the wood is. You should do some cuts prior to grafting on the bottom sections to find out where your necrotic layer may be and how far you need to cut back. And only worry about that at the bottom where you're lining up your graft union. There's also the 
option to do this with wax. Be careful when you're using wax because melted wax has a higher temperature and that may burn your sensitive wood if it's accidentally too hot. And then you may have to cut off more. So just check a few pieces, make certain you're not stressing the wood out too much. But that's one benefit of the shellac here is that we were able to not have to worry about temperature at all. We could just go ahead and seal it up. Now make certain you do, now these happens to be the tops, but do the top and bottom and so that you don't dry out from either direction and that you maintain the viability of the buds at the top and where you're going to do the graft union here at the bottom. So mentioning that sealing both the top and the bottom. The reason it's important to do both directions is at the top here we're trying to preserve the viability of the buds up here. So if you didn't seal the top off it could dry down and you would lose this bud. It would be, become non-viable. It would die, desiccate. Now the bottom it's important because this is the area where we're going to try to form a graft union when we are grafting. Now if this is sealed and stored properly our necrotic layer should be just a few cells in and may not even come this high up. So may not need to worry about cutting off too much. Now depending on how you're doing it, if you're doing thick wax you may want to cut off off all of the bottom there where you have it sealed. And that's just the importance of going ahead and sealing both the bottom and the top of your sign wood. Now that we've cut the sign wood, made sure it has viable buds, and sealed it as well, what we want to talk about now is how to store it properly. Now, this is, I'm just showing you the principle of this because it's obviously not soaking wet. But you're going to want to have some, this is an old t-shirt, you can use paper towels, something that's going to hold moisture but not keep it sopping wet. So you would want this kind of moist and you would kind of wrap the wood up just to keep the moisture trapped in here, uh, but still breathable to some extent. And what I like about these is this stand has it lifted up so that it won't be sitting in any water due to condensation coming off, off of this. Now, the way this nursery is going to handle it, they would use two t-shirts to wrap from the bottom and the top, and then they go ahead and wrap it in a thin plastic bag just to maintain that level of humidity so that they're not having to constantly add moisture that you would lose because they're also keeping it in a cooler. They're keeping this in a large cooler to keep these buds dormant, keep them from using any carbohydrates so that you maintain all those sugars for the healing process and grafting. And that, storing them successfully in a moist environment, already pre-cut and pre-sealed, you're going to get a better graft success rate by going through and doing all these steps prior to going out and grafting.